I assume nobody is recording. If anybody's recording, please let us know. I assume that's no. Um, and I know because we're still in the remote environment, um, we'll have to do a roll call. So first of all, I want to welcome you all to the November 15th, 2023 Conservation Commission meeting at 7.30 p.m. And so as we do in the remote environment, um, we'll do a roll call vote. Um, Catherine Walsh here. Peter Bamber. Here. Uh, Kelsey Quinlan. Here. Joseph Pitty. Here. Joe Gear. Yeah. John Gear. sorry. Sorry about that. All right, great. All right, so we'll start out with our first public hearing. Um, and it is One Technology Way, Notice of Intent, Norwood number 2023-91. And the applicant is Mike Aguirreos of uh, Alexander Aguirreos um, and Representative Sam Malfronte from uh, Soli Engineering. And uh, this is the replication of an isolated vegetated wetland clearing in violation of the Norwood Wetland Protection Bylaw. Would you like to come forward? Uh, I'll start, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, David Hearn Jr. of Gelliman and Cabral on behalf of Michael Ageros and the uh, uh, Alexander Ageros as trustee. Um, and uh, Casey Birch is with us tonight, uh, Sam. Um, Casey drew the short straw, the long straw. He gets to be with us tonight. Um, okay. But in any event, uh, I just want to speak to the document that we've been working on with town council, and that is the easement uh, agreement that uh, I've distributed to the members tonight a copy of what uh, has been circulated um, with town council and gone back and forth with various uh, changes. And uh, it is styled an easement, it, it, and that's what we propose it to be an easement between um, my client and the town. And then it would be, uh, the, town, the easement rights would be administered by the Conservation Commission acting on behalf of the town. Um, the area, nothing's changed physically with respect to the uh, easement or the conditions. Uh, there was some revision of language by town council and by me, and we have other council who've been helping uh, Turning Island had initially been uh, pulling the laboring ore on it, but um, I've kind of taken it over. Um, and as of today, I had an email from uh, David DeLuca of Murphy, Hesse, Toomey, and Lane indicating that he was satisfied with the final draft that I'd circulated, and that's what I've distributed. I thought Ms. Rockland was included on that, but it's possible that I missed her on copying that um, when I sent it out, I think it was early this afternoon. Um, so, um, I think what Mr. DeLuca said in his email was that he's satisfied with the form of it uh, and the contents, but obviously you folks have the final say. And um, so it's, it's up to you folks to uh, consider it and uh, decide whether it's uh, satisfactory to your purposes. Um, we had had some discussion about whether, and, and the last time we were here, there had been a recommendation by the conservation planner that we add signature lines for the Commonwealth, but frankly, uh, we don't think this is something that the Commonwealth would even want to get involved in and to start going down that road at this late date. Um, and that was the first time we heard about it at, when we were here a few weeks ago. But um, at this late date, the Commonwealth typically takes months to review these matters. And uh, my understanding is they're not interested in small tracts of land to be, to be involved in those restrictions. Um, this document is set out as an easement. It gives the Conservation um, Commission and acting on behalf of the town the uh, permanence in terms of what easements are generally perpetual, and this one is. It lays out in uh, a great detail the conditions under which the owner of the property can do certain things, the obligations of the owner of the property in terms of maintaining uh, the replicated wetland and the drainage uh, uh, equipment um, within that maintenance of the easement, the entire easement area, which is I think about 54,000 square feet, uh, gives the Conservation Commission the authority to go in if there's been a deficiency in maintenance or action. Uh, we're still responsible for it, my client is. Um, and the Conservation Commission, of course, has the um, authority to inspect it as, as it feels necessary to do so. Um, one thing that we did do is we took out any reference to the public having an easement. Um, we wanted to make it clear that 
this is private property, and this, I don't want somebody to get the idea that people can come walking through the property because it's called a public easement. And the other thing I wanted to make um, just mention is the easement is granted to the town. When you're dealing with this type of easement, uh, all grants are to the town, which is the body, the, the corporate body that the commission is part of. And then it's one of these uh, arrangements where um, acting by and through the Conservation Commission. So the Conservation Commission will have authority, will have responsibility, will have rights, um, but the conveyance itself would be to the town of Norwood, a municipal corporation. And that's something that town council had reviewed with us, and, um, and I had also raised it. Um, and beyond that, again, much of the change is um, cosmetic or stylistic, a uh, few things, I looked at it also from my experience as a conveyancer that we wanted to make sure that this was going to be binding on the property owner for the benefit of the town. The town Council, as I said, has agreed with the drafts that have gone back and forth in the final draft. Uh, there were a couple of changes Mr. Flynn sent to me yesterday that we agreed to on our side, no problem. And um, that's where we are. So we expect you folks will want to consider it, discuss it. We're happy to ask, uh, answer questions that you might have. Um, and ultimately, when the commission is satisfied and votes to adopt it or accept it, uh, then we circulate for signatures. Uh, signature of uh, Alexander Ageros, the trustee of the trust that holds title. Uh, signature of the chairman of the board of selectmen. The selectmen would have to vote to accept it. And the signature of the chair of the conservation commission also accepting the, um, the easement. So that's what you have in front of you, and that's really my involvement in this. I'm going to leave the technical details to the people who understand them much better than I do, but I'm happy to take any questions that you might have now. Um, otherwise, so it's essentially a, a maintenance easement. It's an easement. Well, we have the responsibility for the FAR, mm -hmm. but we're dedicating this area uh, and, and putting a permanent easement on that okay. area. Just wanted to clarify uh, for the benefit of the town. Mm -hmm. And if for some reason the commission had a concern, they can go in and they can compel us to do what we're supposed to be doing if we're not doing it. And um, uh, you know, the, the commission has other rights with respect to it also. But the idea is this is um, uh, creating a permanent arrangement that covers this property. <laughs> um, and, uh, and it's described in the document, Exhibit A, has the actual legal description. Uh, but uh, it makes reference to a plan. Um, but the, the, the first draft, I thought, was confusing in some respects. We don't make conveyances to the Conservation Commission itself. We make conveyances to the town. And again, as I said, the reference to a public easement uh, raises questions that uh, mm -hmm. it could lead to confusion. Right. I'm a member of the public. Right. Well, you don't grant things to the public. You grant it to the municipal corporation. Right. So that's much of what we were dealing with. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Hearn. Does yes, anyone... I think Mr. Gear might have a question. Sure. Um, so the easement would follow the title, right? Right. Easements are perpetual, okay. uh, unless stated to be otherwise. So the easement is, um, as I describe easements, it's giving somebody else a right to use your property mm -hmm. or a benefit. My client retains ownership of the property but subject to that permanent right. right. So if they sell the property somewhere down the road, that easement is on record and is binding on any subsequent owner. And so these get recorded in the registry of deeds yeah. once they're signed, okay. mm -hmm. along with a plan that illustrates what the easement area is. Yep, and it can only be dissolved by both parties, right? That's right, I mean, if, just be, if, if party A gives party B an easement on the property, and then party A gets mad at B for some reason and says, you can't come on my property, you can't cross my property, or in this case, mm -hmm. this matter. Uh, B has rights that can't be taken away. Mm -hmm. um, and particularly this, I mean, it states it's in perpetuity, and it, uh, most easements are in perpetuity even without stating that. But yeah, it binds, the, it, it ties the property to the agreement regardless of who owns it. All right? All right. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Hearn? I actually have a question. Yeah. From my understanding, um, these, if we don't get a state signature, this would expire in 
30 years no. and then have to be re-upped every 20 years? No, restrictions no. expire, but not easements. Okay. The easements are forever. Okay. Much like diamonds. <laughs> we, I'm sure we're seeing those ads soon on so <laughs> TV. Um, could you describe the difference between the term conservation restriction and easement? Well, an easement, it, it doesn't have to involve conservation land or conservation interests. Conservation restrictions are a dedication of a particular parcel of land for purposes related to what conservation commissions are concerned with, whether it's wetlands or open space sometimes, or just preservation of certain types of areas. Mm -hmm. This is a, um, and, and they, un unless they're made perpetual, uh, and usually this, that's where the state gets involved, they do expire unless renewed. They're 30 years and then they're renewed normally for any type of restriction can be renewed, um, uh, usually under the terms of the document, for 20 years at a time. And restrictions are, you, you see restrictions more often with the development of new subdivisions where they put certain restrictions on. But for conservation restrictions that involve the state are giving the state, as well as the local uh, municipality, mm -hmm. certain rights in the property. Um, our experience has been the state is not interested in smaller parcels. It's not big enough for them to be mm -hmm. concerned with. And we discussed this and I raised this issue with town council and the document that you have before you, we think gives uh, the town everything that you wanted and gives it to you in a way that we don't have to involve the state, it, we don't have to worry about it expiring down the road as a restriction might. Mm -hmm. It is perpetual once granted. Runs with the runs with the land and, and that's it. So they're you know they're the effect is I think is as good as any restriction. Um, in a way I mean <coughs> I don't want to get too deep into restriction. We can talk all night about them and, and but it's really, you know, here we are agreeing that the town has certain rights with respect to this described property, mm -hmm. and we're agreeing to set it aside uh, for the benefit of the town. If the town has those rights, you have the right to go on it, you have the right to compel certain things to be done separate from any notice of intent or anything else that might be out there. This is a and, and easements are voluntary too, so they're even, in a way, they're even more binding than certain orders issued by boards uh, and, and cities and towns and so forth because they are granted voluntarily. And so you can't come back later and say, ah, oh, geez, they forced me, you know, I didn't want to do this. Well, that's your signature on it and it's binding. So um, it goes on forever and it's, it, you know, I've come across tons of easements in my work. Um, you see them for different things, but here it's given rights in the land. My client retains ownership of the land, but also has a permanent obligation. Or whoever owns it, 10, 15, 20 years down the road, it will still benefit the town long after we're gone. Thanks, very Thank helpful. You. All right, thank you. Um, Attorney Hearn said you were a little bit late in getting this, or so are you okay with everything that's been presented? Um, it looked good to me. Okay. Um, the, the, the copy that I had read one line I read. Yep. Um, and Council DeLuca had heard what we needed and yep. said he would look after our interests. Yep. And he worked with David Hearn yep. to get this done. So in that sense, I'm okay. good with it. OK, great. Are there <clears throat> any other questions? OK. Do you feel like, Casey, you need to add anything? No, technically, um, the, for the record, my name is Casey Birch, uh, Solely Engineering. Uh, technically, there hasn't been any modifications um, since the last submission. We've we've had uh, some comments from uh, Carly regarding seed mixes that we that we satisfied on the submission we gave you. I actually um, have a, a couple more comments in regards to that. Just okay. So you know. Okay. Sure. Sure. Um, I will try to answer them. I am not a landscape architect, but I, I will definitely try to answer them. Uh, so it was seed mix and. Um, we had uh, uh, construction dates that were kind of off, so um, we modified them for, to be more realistic on the SEC plans. And um, also, uh, Carly didn't want to use hay bales um, on the SEC plan protections, so we switched to straw bales. 
Carla, you want to add anything? Uh, two things. Sure. Um, one is that the Conservation Commission at a meeting we had, a few meetings past, had mentioned sh shifting the shape of um, then what we were calling the conservation restriction because there's a narrow band along the right and you all had said why don't we just make the why don't we blend that area into the rest um, of the conservation restrictions so that was noted on the response we got back um, saying that that wasn't an option if you could just go yeah yeah the I mean, reasoning the, behind the, that so originally we agreed upon um, we went across the strait like this, so because we agreed upon a buffer um, that was uh, corresponding with Holly originally. Um, Holly requested additional area uh, in the form of uh, 53,440 for calculations of um, uh, due to the the basin and the, the buffer, the 25 foot buffer. Uh, so we provided that with this leg here. Uh, the I, we, we did ask the client if you'd like to modify that. He, he'd really like to keep it the way the way it is. We, we do encompass um, the easement area that is required. Uh, I know it's a little unorthodox, but that is the shape that um, he, we, we would like to keep. So I wanted to make sure that you all are in agreement with that, That's a, that that is acceptable to you. Because that was one change that was not made, one change that you had brought up. I don't see an issue, but I don't hear okay. it. Makes a reasonable compromise. Yeah. Okay, okay. you good? Um, and then one more note in sure. terms of um, so I had requested native seed mixes, yeah. and there is one that remains um, that is not, it's the Pennington Smart Seed Mix. If that could sh be shifted to a native mix, that would be great. Yeah, we can definitely do that. Uh, it's on page six of the plan. Is it the Pennington? <coughs> yeah, the Pennington Smart Seed Sun and Shade mix is all non-native, but the other ones work. Perfect. Yeah, I'll um. I'll coordinate with my landscape architect to give that change. Great, thank you. Any other questions? So um, I presume next steps we need to have a full response back from town council on this before proceeding. Or no? Uh, I think that's it. Do we need? I'm asking. Do we need formal response back from town council on your discussions? Or yeah, I thought he copied Carly on that today. I thought you did. I may have been a chair, but that's that's all I'm asking. Yeah. Um, from Mr. DeLuca. I thought he communicated that he was okay with the. Um, wait, I'm looking. That's from you, John. Carly. Uh, yeah. Is there communication that they've approved this? Uh, let's see. Yep, he's David DeLuca is okay with it. Do you have his email? Um, I, I do. Reviewed. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, and that no, it came in today, right? One one thirteen. Yep, okay. Right. Yeah. I had sent him about quarter of one. I had yep. sent him the, the cleaned up copy. Yep. Um, he says he's confirming that the edits have been incorporated and in the final agreed version is proper for submission to the CONCOM. So I think he's all set with that, Peter. That's all um, I Good call. Okay. Wanted to so um, is the motion to approve the easement as submitted tonight with the um, adjustment on the seed mix? Yeah. Okay. I'd make that motion. Right. Second. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, John. Okay. Um, and we'll go around and vote. Um, the, the assistant chair, vice chair votes yes. Um, Peter? Yes. Carly? I'm sorry. Um, Kelsey? <laughs> it's only been a few months. Kelsey, yeah, okay. I know. <laughs> Joe? Yes. John? Yes. Yes. Okay. Approved. All right. Thank you. Appreciate your time, you guys. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. So that concludes the public hearing, right? And um, we can move into the wetland issues and updates.
And uh, the next on the agenda is the proposed constructed stormwater wetlands at Wendy's slash BJ's 1420 Boston Providence Highway. Uh, Carly? Oops, sorry, moving too quickly. Um, so last I wrote with um, Sam Malafronte, I had a few uh, suggestions. It was in a note from November 9th, and I didn't see responses to those yet, so I'd want to see those. Yes, um, we are working on those. Okay, um, great. Uh, Mary, who I think you've been coordinating with, uh, is our landscape architect. I spoke she, with her, yeah. Yeah, she's, um, she developed most of the, the comments because they were mostly landscape uh, comments. Okay. Uh, but they are still in draft form right now. Okay. Uh, I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Carly, but I believe the what we're trying to get tonight is um, to have the commission issue a friendly enforcement order. Mm -hmm. uh, and with that, we will submit re your responses and the modifications to the plans. Um, mm -hmm. in conjunction with that or to that um, order. Mm -hmm. So we, we, it's draft form, plans aren't revised yet, but we are working on it. Okay. So I just have to say, um, <laughs> point of clarification, what is a friendly enforcement order and is an enforcement <laughs> order an enforcement order, right? So yeah, yeah, enforcement. We, put it, we put it in air Okay, quotes. all right. <laughs> so it technically is an enforcement order, Correct, but yes. we're, we're offering it with a lot of love. Okay. Yes. All right, good, all right. <laughs> but it's an enforcement order, okay. Right. Great. Um, and Carly, are you all set with that? Um, so basically, they're going to be showing us their plan. Okay. This this just says that they're going to be going forward with their plan and with the responses to um, our correspondence, from my understanding. And the gist is, is that they're moving the location of the catch basin? They're changing the function okay. of the stormwater feature Correct. over to the stormwater wetlands. Uh, I apologize. I'm not sure if Sam actually went over what, what the draft of what we we're actually trying to do mm -hmm. um, in the last meeting, but just a quick, quick, quick recap. I think it's probably worth it. Yeah. Um, Thank you. So, currently, you, the situation is that there is groundwater in this basin, and it is there pretty much at all times. It takes a while to evaporate. Um, so, and it's about nine inches. In, um, in height uh, so from what we've measured uh, after every rainstorm event and 72 hours afterwards. So what we're planning to do is come in with material and plugs and create kind of a pocket wetland. Uh, it's the closest form within the required wetland, constructed wetlands and wetlands in the, um, in the uh, I think the DEP manual. Because, uh, so that, that was one of your comments, what, what are you kind of designating this is? Mm -hmm. And we can't get exact, all the exact um, requirements of an actual wetlands, you know, because of uh, the four bays and stuff like that, which we don't have room in here. But we're, we're trying to get to something close as possible. So, um, and that'll be all explained in, in, in the comment letter, but essentially we're coming in, filling in 12 inches of material and then providing the necessary um, wetland plantings into, into that material. Uh, we're keeping the stone bedding underneath, um, but the 12 inches is enough uh, material for these plants to grow and thrive in, in, this, wet, in this constant wet condition. So. And the idea is you won't see the water as much in, in, in the, in, you'll just see plants at the bottom of the basin, essentially. Carly, you have thoughts on this? Um, I'm excited for it. Okay. I guess you could also perhaps speak to um, why you would want the plants in there. What, what will they do for this wetlands? Like the benefits, they'll be pulling up pollutants from Correct. my understanding yeah. and using water and... Yeah. So this, this site was already designed with obviously a hydrodynamic separator. There's pre pre prior to getting to, into this basin. But yes, the, the plants will be an added benefit in, on top of that treatment train. Um, yeah, just to clarify, only treated water goes in there. Correct. Yes. Yeah, and it's it's all the water from the uh, the Wendy's and um, mm -hmm. uh, BJ's gas uh, pavement areas. So. 
And the enforcement order is the vehicle that requires them or allows them to do this work? From my understanding. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Any other questions? I guess there's one thing that was interesting to note, right? So there's currently an outlet, um, but Holly was pointing out that the water level in this feature is at the same elevation, I believe, as the outlet of the pipe. So she was thinking there should be some way um, that that's, I guess that the outlet is protected so that there's still a way from, for water to leave the basin if needed, besides the overflow. Yeah, um, I, I haven't seen that out yet. I, I believe it's, I believe yeah. you that it's there, but I, I've been out there several times and I haven't seen it yet. Our surveys didn't pick it up, yeah. but if we, during construction, if we do find it, yeah. I'm assuming if that's there, they probably put it in there because there was water in this. Mm -hmm. They wanted some way to hopefully get it out. It didn't work because it's probably at the same elevation as the, mm -hmm. the wetlands in the corner and it just equalizes now. So that pipe is just acting as like an equal water connection. So the pipes uh, in the feature, it, not in the wetlands. It extends from the feature, from my understanding, to a wetland area. Right. Well, you used to be able to see it in the wetland and years ago, but I don't know about now. <laughs> oh, maybe I didn't look on that side. Mm -hmm. So maybe maybe I would see it if I actually went in and looked in. That's the only place I ever saw it. So, but if it, if you removed it. Let's say theoretically, which we do not want to do because we, want to, we don't want to do mm -hmm. the disturbance within the wetlands and stuff like that. But if you, if you had removed it, um, since the water is kind of the same elevation as the wetlands and the pond, uh, we're assuming that this is constant groundwater. It's always going to be that way mm -hmm. unless we fill it um, with this material and plug it. So sense. even if that pipe wasn't there, it, uh, it looks like it would be still an issue. It's not going uphill, I guess. I would guess. Yeah. But. Is there a specific language in the enforcement order that you would want us to vote on, or just? Um, I do not have specific language, I guess, to ensure that just the, the, the plan is followed up. You know, just we continue on this path to create this feature in a timely manner. But I think it was talking about planting would have to occur in the spring. In the spring, yes. Right. Um, so yeah, yeah, we would like to make that known that we obviously couldn't do it in the winter or anything. But. Mm -hmm. so, so is there an action item tonight, or are we waiting the for order. the okay, waiting for maybe so the next meeting? The enforcement order, the motion, I guess, would be to uh, issue an enforcement order to rectify the uh, stormwater issues. Okay. And I think um, Joseph had a question. No, Good. it's okay. I'd um, make that motion. But there need to be a timeline associated with that, like an end date. And are you looking for an end date for that? I think it should include that it should take place in the spring to allow for planting in the spring. Right. So I I append that to my. So motion. should we look to issue the enforcement order the next meeting or the next two meetings? We can do it right now. Oh, okay. That's why I'm making a motion to do so. To issue the enforcement order. Right. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Second. All right. Um, we'll vote on the uh, um, motion in front of us to issue the enforcement order. Um, um, Catherine Walsh, aye. Peter Bamber? Aye. Uh, Kelsey? Aye. Joe? Point of clarification. Is, yes. Do we, did we want to put a date on it or no? I think Kel, you're right. Was there a date associated in this towards motion? drafting the language to issue it as soon as possible. It'll be included in the, the order itself. Yeah. I mean, perhaps this is planted before the summertime, right, for a better plant survival. Like a June 1st-ish? Action, but order earlier. Yes, we do the enforcement yeah. order now, and then yeah. so that this can take place in the spring. With deadlines, okay, fair enough. Cool. Is that good, Joe? Aye. Okay, <laughs> good. John? Aye. Okay, motion approved. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roach, I appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. You as well. Okay. So the next wetland issues and update is the dumping of fill was observed in Cooper Park. Carly. Um, Holly noticed this. I have not yet followed it up, um, but that is in my plan. Is this new fill or something? I don't think she'd seen it before. Okay. 
What is fill That's in this shame. scenario? Like dirt or leaf litter? It sounded more like it was debris, maybe construction debris. Okay. After all the cleanup they've done, that's so disappointing. Yeah. All right, so the um, action is you're going to follow up with a visit and yes. report back at the next meeting? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, great. Thanks. Perhaps we should uh, see if the DPW could put a no dumping sign up or down there somewhere. Mm. That's a great yeah, idea. Yeah. Okay. That's great. So get with DPW and see if they make, maybe can do it if it hasn't already been done. I'm mm -hmm. kind of shocked that it wouldn't have been done but with all the dumping that's gone on over there in the past years. Okay. Um, so the next item is the proposed application for IMP at the Food Forest event. And I think um, Carly sent an email. Did, did it go to the whole Conservation Commission or just the ending subcommittee? Um, I think just the subcommittee. Okay. So I think I, I reviewed it and it seemed reasonable. I can't remember if Steve weighed in on it. He did not. He did not, yeah. No. And so I'm interested to hear what you have to say, Carly. Um, so we're going to be having an event on Saturday and you each have a flyer for the event. Mm -hmm. So it's where Shannon Baruch of the Boston Food Forest Coalition is going to teach people how, sort of how to put your, your food forest to bed for the winter, which includes pruning of dead wood. And her and Mark Negron's idea was to also apply um, integrated pest management techniques for <clears throat> deterring insects over the winter. Um, and the, the techniques that she wants to use are applying uh, it's called organic liquid copper and also organic neem oil. Um, she also wants to use some clay to cover up holes. And my question for the CONCOM or most recently for the CONCOM sub subcommittee that deals with Endine is, is, is it an acceptable use of basically of um, a pesticide, pesticides? I wanted to make sure that was uh, yeah. kosher with the CONCOM. Yeah. And um, I did a little bit of reading. Uh, the copper is used in organic agriculture you know, there is, when you read about it, there, it does have negative environmental effects um, eventually in the soil used over time, it accumulates, right? I think that she's just going to probably do a small amount of it, um, but it is interesting to read, and it is interesting to, to read that it is used in organic agriculture. Um, neem oil, there doesn't seem to be a lot of, um, negative um, environmental effects in terms, I guess, in terms of like toxicity remaining in the environment. I know that if you're doing organic gardening at home and you use neem oil, it does kill a variety of insects. Um, because I hadn't had the okay from the CONCOM like previously, and this event is on Saturday, I had told her, you know, I'd, I'm not comfortable using these if we haven't had the okay from the CONCOM. So she's prepared just to educate the people about these, the use of techniques and not necessarily to use them. But if you're okay with them, then she can go forward and also demonstrate how to use these. So I'll just add, I probably did the exact same thing you did, got my Google on and, yeah. you know, researched it and um, looked at, um, you know, what the environmental impacts were related to yeah. it and I think I came to the same conclusion that you did if in a limited quantities these are very safe and yeah. it looks like she's just doing it to button up it so um, I was I, I sent an email to Carly saying that yeah. I would support the use of this so I'm comfortable with it I wish Steve had had, had a chance to take a look at it but I think two of the three of us sort of came to the same conclusion so I, I'm inclined to recommend that we support that with um, the establishment of the you know, food forest, um, was there any dis like discussion or anything written about the intent of all of this prior? You know what I mean? Even of using herbicides? Yeah, or like was there any like thought? Like the principle? Yeah, like, like the principle. Time. I would just need yeah. to, I, yeah. I agree with you, but yeah. if it goes somewhat against the principle of whoever 
establish yeah. this and I'd, I'd feel. <laughs> so I think that's one of the things that we were starting to get to and today was supposed to be our first meeting for the food forest and to talk about right. this as a subcommittee and unfortunately Steve is sick so um, but I think your point is well taken like we need to have a much more holistic approach of what we're doing here and um, so I agree with that, but um, I guess the real question is, is do we feel like we can move forward with this now or should we wait to convene the subcommittee and maybe have them come back and do it? I don't know what the um, implications would be to wait on this. Um, did you get a sense from um, them on that? Um, not of impact for tree yeah. health over the winter. Right. I didn't. Um, I, I will say I, I think that um, Mark Negron has applied some type of like what he calls organic herbicides yeah. in the past there mm -hmm. with Holly's, yeah. you know, okay on it. Yeah. So it has been used in the past. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. don't know if these particular uh, ingredients were used or if it was something yeah. separate. I mean, my thought is if, if you say it's acceptable, yeah. but I'm going to rely on that opinion anyway. So Yeah, and maybe the takeaway is we come back with a more holistic approach. We'll have like an oversight document term. created. Yes. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. agreed. Okay, so if you guys are okay with that, do we should we vote on that, or is it um, do we just kind of head nod? I think it's. I, think, yeah. I don't know that we have to vote. On okay, that. all right. So I think we'll we'll advance that, and then you know the takeaway is um, I think we're getting set to schedule another meeting, if not waiting till the next meeting, and then we'll come back with a more coordinated approach to how we're handling MD. Joe, does that work for you? Uh, if it was a vote, I probably personally would have abstained. Uh, I would want to do some independent research and just make sure I understand the full uh, scope of, the, th of yeah. the chemicals. But I was looking, and I agree with that, but what yeah. I was saying, this is a one-time application, and before yes. it gets done again, is we should, I didn't explain that, we should come up with an oversight document, something yeah. like that. Yeah. S small, uh, small doses, I don't have an enormous uh, issue with it, but you know, if it was down to a vote, I would probably say I'm a little bit more on the fence. But, okay, um, fair enough. Again, okay. so we'll come back with a more long term, like yearly plan where it's yeah, not. Yeah, I don't know if it's something in writing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we should have something in writing. That, yeah, something and that's, that's what we're driving towards. Right. Right. Yes, exactly. Right. Okay. All right, that's good feedback, Joe. Thanks. Okay. Um, all right, and no other wetland issues or updates. Um, we'll move on to the Conservation Commission business, so the CPC report. So we had a meeting last week and um, all of the draft applications are in and we have sent letters to all the applicants asking for additional information, additional requirements. Um, you know, we're anticipating in the next month or so getting, I can't remember the actual deadline of when we're gonna get the final applications. But, um, you know, I'll just go quickly. Um, we've got Washington Fire Bells, we've got the Day House Fireplace Restoration, St. Gabriel's Windows and Roof. Um, again, the annual town reports, town hall artwork, um, memorial, um, um, the library stained glass windows, uh, memorial hall benches. Um, we have the community development. Um, there's an organization that helps us out with that. It's a subscription that uh, the planning folks would like to take advantage of. We've got a project in for the Vernon Street Veterans Housing, which is one of our biggest. They're asking for a million dollars, and so clearly we're getting more information and they've got some matching stuff going on with that. Um, Morse Hill Veterans Park, um, which is being sponsored by the Board of Selectmen, Airport uh, Playground. We've got the uh, Conservation Commission transfer where CPC moves in uh, $10,000, and the Tyat uh, Trail Bridge and then um, the Shattuck Park improvements. Um, I would say that the most controversial out of those is the um, Shattuck uh, Park improvements. Um, there's been some email traffic or Facebook traffic going um, back and forth about that. So we received an application for that last year and um, the applicants did not do any community um, or neighbor outreach and there was a lot of um, anxiety about what that was going to be and a lot of neighbors came out and we declined the project at that point and recommended that they do more outreach to their neighbors. So I do think they have done some outreach but sort of the vibe I'm getting is, is the outreach hasn't been um, significant enough and so um, 
there was some Facebook stuff, and Julie um, Barba Iso, who's been great, was like talking about, you know, they really felt like it was a ConCom project or a town project, and we were just relating back that no, in fact, these are applicant projects that come to us, and that doesn't necessarily mean that they're endorsed by the selectmen, the town, or historic, or whatever. So I think this is this one might be a bit of a challenge for us um, because some of the neighbors are still. Um, feel like they haven't been consulted. What are they looking to do? So they're looking at putting some signage and what they want to do is some fencing at the entrances, at the front and the back entrance. Um, but the folks who are against, or, or the neighbors who are against it seem to be insinuating that this fence, it's going to be a perimeter fence that sort of locks us down, but that's not what the proponents are arguing for. They're just saying they would like to see it demarcated in a meaningful way that indicates that it's a open space area. So I think the applicants need to do a lot more yeah, outreach. One of, the, one of the issues might be, it seems to me that, uh, remember, reading something or hearing something about um, when that land was given to the town, yeah. there was a lot of restrictions on it. Yes, yeah, so um, that's been a, definitely um, a subject of discussion at CPC, and we can't find anything in writing about that. Apparently there's a news article that indicates that there is some restrictions, but it's a little vague. So, um, we're, you know, to be quite honest, we're pushing a little bit of this on the applicants to do more outreach, mm -hmm. but... Um, this might be a little controversial, and um, we might be in the same position where we're saying we still don't think you've done enough mm -hmm. outreach because they're asking for twenty-five thousand dollars to do a feasibility study related to this. But um, and that's you know. a park; that's not a conservation property. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Well, but it is, you know, applicable for CBC funding, arguably, if right. it was but a, it's, a I'm just saying, project. Right. Yeah. People had brought. You know, yeah. you had said it was. It's a conservation. It's not a conservation property. Yep, good point, yep. So, um, more on that. Um, so we'll see, I mean, we have a lot on the books. We can, in fact, fund it all, but, you know, I'm not sure that we actually will. So we'll see about that. All right, any questions? Okay. Um, I think, Carly, we have minutes from uh, 1025. Yes, <coughs> did you? Hope? I did, I reviewed them. If you approve them, I approve them. You're the minutes. Well, You're the minutes. You see, you see. now right? it has to be you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I reviewed them. So um, does anybody have any comments? Did you guys get a chance to review them? Yeah, motion to approve. Oh. Second. Great. All right, we'll vote. Um, Vice Chair, uh, uh, yes. Peter? Yes. Carl? Oh, <laughs> my God. Um, Kelsey? Yes. Joe? Uh, Abstain was not here. Oh, right, okay. And John? Yes. Awesome, thank you, approved. All right, Asian update. Um, I thought I could tell you a little bit about site visits and what I've been up to. And I now need readers, which I don't have, so I have to do this. <laughs> um, you might have noticed that in the QNAP folder, I included a 76 Prospect Street folder in there, mm -hmm. and that was just as follow-up to one of our prior meetings. Um, when Dan Merrickin invited me to go to 76 Prospect and talk about what plants we could have put in there, like what we'd recommend. So I did that. I went and we chatted about, you know, using native plants that you typically find on a site like that. And we looked at what was already growing there in terms of native species and I made recommendations along those lines. Um, Ryan Rosine came with him. Um, and so Ryan created a plan and it looks great. So I said, go ahead. Um, the plan looks good. Uh, let's see, I went with the trails committee to check out um, one of their trails by Norwood Gardens and the Neponset River in Vanderbilt. If you can, can you visualize where that is? Mm -hmm. uh, he took, they took me, I went with um, Lee Leach and Joe Barrett and we went all the way back and it is a gorgeous property. And Joe Barrett has created some trails, you know, but their idea for our town is to create a huge trail system. And it's just thrilling to think that our residents can use properties like that. You know, you don't have to feel like you have to go to Blue Hills to see something gorgeous. It's right here. We'll have, you know, so if they receive funding, um, more people will be able to see that. It was also interesting to see more native species in person looking gorgeous, you know, out in the open. 
Um, I went to their the trails meeting last night to meet everybody. Um, and so that was that was good. Uh, what else? I I went to NEPRA, Neponset River Watershed Association, with the Trails Committee to talk about how the two groups could work together to create the um, the crossings over the waterways in along the Tiat Trail. Um, that's on this list. Uh, we received, if we move on to 76 Prospect Street again, um, we received the Tetra Tech response. So uh, Tetra Tech will come to our next ConCom meeting to talk about 76 Prospect Street plans. Now has the, the uh, engineer that the um, about his hired. Does he had any input? Um, I don't. I don't believe so yet. I, I want to make sure that I forwarded. It's uh, a good point. Because I would love to hear um, a peer reviewer um, answer what what he thinks about that retention base, and that really bothers me. went on a site visit to Moderna. So each month I go on a site walk at Moderna and see what they are up to, their different projects. And at this last one, they had finished doing a lot of planting of native species. So that was great to see on their campus. Um, but we go around and we look at the different, um, the different excavation areas that they're doing. Um, and I look at the stormwater controls, like erosion controls. And if I see issues, then I tell them about what the issues are, uh, and they fix them. And Zach Gallup tends to be there as well, who I believe works for PAR, and he he does these site inspections more frequently than I go, and he reports issues that he sees and has them work on fixing them as well. Um, if I move on to the CPA application now, it's so it's due this Friday. So I'm working on that for the Conservation Commission to move $10,000 into our conservation fund so that we could eventually buy land or work on land that we've already bought with um, CPA funds. And moving on to the next item, it's the Saturday's pruning workshop at the Food Forest. You all are welcome to come. You can also share the flyer or share the event email with people. It would be great if we could get more people to attend these events. We've had um, very small attendance at the last couple. It'd be great to figure out how to get more people involved. And I've been working on um, making our outreach broader, so figuring out like list service that I can send emails to to get people to come to the food forest or places to put flyers, you know, to get more of our population of, throughout Norwood to come. So if you are you doing Norwood now? Um, yes, Mark Negron posted in Norwood now. Okay. Um, so if you all have more ideas about, yes. I do have an idea. Uh, yes. Share. Have you in the past, obviously super new, but have you in the past uh, considered running this as like a partnered program with the rec department as like a learn to or basics of program? Uh, as a rec director, this is certainly something I know parents in the town I work for would be pretty cool uh, or pretty interested on in and would just look for something to get their kids out of the house and go to. Um, and the education-based recreation uh, and environmental components of it would probably blend pretty nicely if the rec department is obviously uh, amenable to it. I think that's a great idea. It is. And they have a rather and that's large right pool up Mark's, of people. That's right up Mark's alley too. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Huge pool of people probably with their registration software and their brochures and flyers. I, I know I get them in the mail here and they'll be pretty active, so. Cool. I think That's great. Um, just in terms, so I, I I'll say that the events, running events at the Food Forest is still a pretty new mm -hmm. um, activity for us. Um, and I think that it will need more sort of forethought, so planning ahead of time in order to get it like in the rec department's catalogs. Oh, yeah. So this, I think that this is um, 
something to shoot for. It's a vision. It's not an ideal, and I want to keep it down. But it just will involve doing things a little bit differently in the future. We um, can add that to our um, the ending subcommittee to be able to yeah. perhaps get a calendar so that we could get it onto the rec calendar to get a broader yeah. audience. Yeah. The, the other thing is we're producing the events we're running now through um, a grant through the Norwood Cultural Council. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it would also be a shift that way. Perhaps we wouldn't need a grant then if we ran it through the rec department or Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Let's think about this. Yeah, yeah. Different ways of doing it. That's a good idea. Um, finally, the last point here is congrats to Kelsey. I don't know if you opened your envelope. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to open yeah, your envelope? Yeah, sure. <laughs> she has earned her Massachusetts Association of Conservation Commission certificate. Oh, wow. Way to go. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh. Now we have to go celebrate. Kelsey, thank you. That's awesome. Well Good done. for you. It's easy with the online class. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's very challenging. Yes, yes. The content <laughs> thank still you, substantive. That's I terrific. Say, I will say that I went to the MACC conference for the first time, and there, you know, it's it offers great opportunities for learning. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, um, and you can keep going back because there's always different workshops yeah. that they offer. So that was, that was great. Yeah, right. so thank you for doing that. Lifelong learner. That's what we love. And that's it for me. All right. Well, it seems like Peter. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Second. All right. Well, vote. Um, vice Chair votes yes. Peter? Aye. Kelsey? Aye. Joe? Aye. John? Aye. Awesome. All right. Thank you, everybody.